Hi boys and girls, it's me Butch. My name is Terry David Silvercloud. I'm not native, just sounds that way. I'm uh, 79 years old and I'll be 80 in October. Today is the 2nd of July 2024. Uh, Tuesday I'm down in English Bay. It's probably around 8 p.m. in the evening. Uh, nice warmish evening. Uh, so I'm going to try and give you a really flash crash course and Butch's theory about reality. This was brought about by uh, reading about the Higgs boson and the God particle and uh, Professor Higgs and I are in agreement about quite a few things about the way the universe works. Uh, I'm into sort of a hobby as particle physics, motion physics, cosmology, and like a lot of geeks <laughs> who are into physics, I have my own theory of everything. So I'm going to give you a crash course in my theory of everything. Um, Big Bang can be treated as a theory or as an actuality, um, but as an actuality, you probably have to accept that Big Bangs are always going on somewhere in an infinite universe because logic says that uh, there can't be outsides because as soon as you do that, you create new problems. So um, Butch accepts that the universe is infinite. Uh, time is an illusion based on how big you are um, and how you view things relative to other things. Uh, but the universe is infinite, and we're pretty small in the scheme of things, uh, but just big enough to be a pretty decent size. Uh, so try to imagine the, the problem uh, out there is uh, how do you start a universe full of one thing? Um, well, you have to assume it has somethingness because nothingness by definition does not exist. So space is full of somethingness. This is sort of like a Big Bang theory like using it as an idea, not as a reality. But if there was a beginning, space was full of the exact same thing forever, everywhere. Um, but one big solid hunk is just not a reasonably logical thing. So it had to be made of parts, and if it was one thing, all the parts would have to be the same. So that's okay. Uh, and however s small is as small as you have to be just before nothingness, and there's going to become a point where uh, the head is chasing the tail, but it can no longer break apart, and that is your smallest part. But each part is fighting for space, and it's trying to break apart at the same time. And if it does, it has a choice of turning right or turning left, and that creates two different types of the same thing. Left, this is physical spin, not quantum spin. A physically left spinning thing or a physically right spinning thing. And if they were to put their toes together, um, there would be a Coriolis effect sort of thing going on, just like the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. You don't notice the difference which side you're on, even though you're spinning in different directions. You just don't notice. It just works out the right way for you. Uh, because there's no real up or down. It's all <laughs> kind of a weird illusion. So the universe is trying to break apart, and speed is set by the smallest whatever there is, because it, in order for me to transfer information from here to there, it either has to go through me, and if it can't do that because I'm solid, I could turn and transfer the information over to there and then go back to where I was to bring information back. Uh, you're getting the drift. The thing is that uh, that physical size is going to determine speed and relativity will be like relative to you and it. Uh, so in most of our reality, that's set by the electron and how big the electron is. Now in quantum physics, which uh, uh, deal, which turns everything into a wave, an electron is just a wave, so it has no size, it has wavelength. 
and how fast it turns will be its frequency. And we can't really see things smaller than an electron, uh, but we can spin multiple electron sources and view the the wave interaction of the shadows, as it were, and sometimes that will give us ideas of shapes and sizes, and that's sort of how we've managed to take pictures of really fuzzy ones, but pictures of actual atoms. We've actually sort of technically photographed things like gold atoms, I think, a few other atoms, and what we're doing or how we're doing it is uh, looking at the shadows of uh, spinning electrons, and somehow some brilliant people have figured out a way to do that. I don't know how, but they do it. I could probably figure it out. I'm a smart boy. I don't have time. So where was a Butch's theory of reality? So what happens eventually is is that uh, I had a little stick here somewhere, and I've lost it. But here we have three sticks tying together, and Butch is saying in his reality, there comes a point where a stick can't get any shorter. To ch- it wants to... It wants to unite itself, but it's still a stick, and it's not long enough to touch its its uh, for its toe to touch its head. Remember, each stick is different. One is turning one way, and other sticks are turning the other way. So there's two different types of sticks. That gives it that gives it poles, and there's something about this that we we call electromagnetic and I'm not sure how exactly to deal with that just now don't worry about it but these things can join together and the the least number that can join together would be three and they do and there are Bush is saying there are subatomic particles that are composed of three basic units now what happens when these things start spinning is they're being here and there, there being here and there, their edges at different times, but they're being the same thing. And that means they're not going to obey the laws of things going in straight lines. So if the basic speed of these units was their, based on their physical size, the ones that start spinning are going to be moving <clears throat> physically, this is kind of hard to get through your head, slower than the other stuff that's just sitting there. It turns out that it divides itself into stuff which is traveling faster than the speed of light and stuff traveling slower than the speed of light. So there's two ways you can look at it. You could say the spinning stuff is traveling faster than the speed of light, and that's the best way to view it. So one of these things starts rotating, and to keep up with all the other things, it's physically in one spot moving faster. Um, Another way that these things can join together is four of them. And remember, they can either be spinning one way or spinning the other way. Uh, So you get two types that could join together and they'd be inclined to join together themselves. Every time these things join together, they're conserving energy. But they themselves, to do that, are moving faster in the speed of light. And in fact, their rate of spin has to be the speed of light squared or faster. So if they're traveling at the speed of light cubed, they could fill a point source for a given amount of time, could be everywhere all at once to an observer relatively in the same spot at the same time, filling a sphere if it were traveling at a speed where the diameter of the sphere was the speed of light for a given amount of time. So you start having what become the fermions, the solid things, and and the bosons, the ones that are behaving differently. And that starts becoming the, the duality 
aside from different sticks you can have, we're starting to increase the possibilities of how things could work. It's really obvious from observation that things like forming crystals, they just do. So that is what must be happening in reality from the smallest level to the largest level. And Butch says it does. And these things here, when they are going around, they're going to create a field within them, which is going to be either sucking the stuff around them in or blowing it the other way, and depending on which way they're turning, these things start becoming solid-like. And if they start joining together with more of themselves, interesting things happen. Did you know the Holy of Holies is a cube? The Kaaba is a cube? Do you know you can fold a cross into a cube? Remember that? <laughs> Remember that cross I was just holding? Cube. Now you see it, now you don't. Butch says the elemental really shape shape besides the cube is the regular prism. I'm losing my light here. The sun's going behind a cloud. I'm still here. And that it can join together in two different ways, that way or that way. When it's that way, it's Johnson Solid J26, uh, the gyro bifastigium. Butch thinks this is one of the elemental hunks of reality, one of the really secure fermions that once you got one of these, it ain't coming apart. I think this is probably what an electron looks like uh, when it's not spinning, which is pretty certain this is probably what an electron looks like. And remember, protons are nearly 2,000 times bigger, so protons will be assemblages of cubes and gyro bifastigii and uh, regular prisms. So I've gone on and on long enough to try to give you an idea of how I think of reality. And since I'm losing the light, I'm going to wrap it up. What you should know is inside every, every cube, if I can get this open, naturally it doesn't want to open on me. It's here somewhere. Inside every cube is a three-dimensional star of David called a Merkaba star. And uh, that's just something very interesting. Uh, but I'm not going to go on any further because uh, I thought I could make this a short video. And it's just getting long like it usually is. Uh, but maybe it'll give you a bit of an idea how Butchie Poo thinks about reality. Now i got to stoop down here. Well, and look for your button. And I'm going to say bye from Butch.